What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. Guys, it is time for the second adventure with the Dwarf Nomad of the Worm in Iron Helm. I am stoked to get into this, guys. We made it through the first dungeon with ease. We breezed right through it. We went all the way down to level 5, and we fought the Lich. And, uh, yep, we're ready to head into the second adventure. We're going to be playing Galnox Labyrinth today. And I'm doing something exciting, guys. I am adding in the Realms and Relics expansion pack. So... Check this out, guys. It says, a companion booster meant to complement the base adventure. One instruction card, eight artifact cards, and nine environment cards come in the expansion. And here is the instruction card right here. So, it says, adding this pack to the game will allow you to add environment cards. Environment cards make each level of a dungeon unique and behave differently. At the beginning of each level, draw an environment card and read it to understand how the level is changed. Text in red refers to negative aspects of the level, such as certain enemies dealing more damage. Text in white tells you positive changes to the level, such as additional benefits at the campsite. Adding environment cards will increase the overall difficulty of the dungeon. This pack also includes artifact cards. These are powerful and valuable loot cards. Because of this, it is difficult to obtain many of them. When instructed to draw a loot card during the game, you may pay blessing tokens to draw from the artifact deck instead. Your first artifact will cost one blessing token, while your second will cost two, and your third will cost three, and so on. Artifact cards are always drawn randomly. So guys, this is going to add some difficulty to the game, and uh, we also get these artifact cards over here that we could potentially get a hold of. I don't think I've ever gotten one before, so I'm excited to try to get my hand on one of those unique pieces of loot there. And uh, of course, we're heading to the Lonely Troll Inn. In between adventures, you will find rest at the Lonely Troll where you can do the following. We can refresh our health and energy to their starting levels and remove all poison. I've gone ahead and done so. Also, you may spend your gold on any items in the trappings deck and you may trade in any remaining enemy cards as trophies, gaining one gold each. So, we've got three enemies in the grave. The Lich, the Consuming Mass, and the Undead Archer. We're going to trade in all of those and we're going to get one gold each. So, I'll set the enemies back over here. And we'll put the Lich back in the boss pile. And so we're going to get three gold since we get one gold for each of those guys. That puts us up to a total of five gold like so. Also, we have to get rid of all of our rations and we get rations printed on our class card, which is zero, unfortunately. And we would also get the gold printed on our class card, but it is also zero. So we don't get any extra gold from our class card. There we go. So we're going in empty handed as far as food and gold goes. Um... There we go, guys. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's see which henchman is in the Lonely Troll. So, normally you get to pick the henchman, but as you guys probably know by now, I like to pick a random henchman, and that's who's hanging out at the Lonely Troll whenever we show up. Let's see who we've got this time. It's Olive. That's who it was the last time. <laughs> Crazy. Olive spent many years as a healer in the northern peaks of Norsha. When at the campsite, she will tend to your wounds, removing all poison. Whenever you defeat a foe that has six or more health, Olive will lose one morale, and she starts with two morale, and it costs one gold to hire her. So we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to spend the one gold to hire her, and we're going to get Olive down this way. See if we can make a little bit more room for our stuff over here. There we go. And we'll give her two morale, like so. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that's it for the Lonely Troll. We can go ahead and head out from the Lonely Troll, and we're going to head into Galnox Labyrinth. And you know what? I'm going to set this over here, just in case I need to refer to the little rules for that, since I don't normally play with the Realms and Relics. There we go. All right, guys, so we're heading into Galnox Labyrinth. As the moon rises in the sky, and the howls of nightmare creatures linger in the air, you find yourself at the entrance of a cave. Maybe a good place to take a little rest. Remove the following cards from the base game and replace them with the cards found in this adventure pack. The enemies that I've removed are the Orc Warrior, the Goblins, the Wolves, and the Fishman. They are gone. And the plots that have been removed are the Old Woman, the Passageway, and the Wolf, and I've replaced them with all the enemies and plots from the Galnox Labyrinth expansion. And the boss at the end of the dungeon, of course, is Galnox himself. If we flip this over, we've got a unique little map on the other side that we could use, so we'll just place it on top of our other map like so. And we're going into level one of the dungeon to start. And we're at negative five morality from the last dungeon since morality will persist between adventures. So we're way down on the morality track there. Let's go ahead and get everything nice and shuffled up here uh, before we head in, get this randomized. And I'm excited, guys. I'm very excited 
to get into this playthrough. Not only because we're decked out with our character, he is absolutely stacked and he is a beast. He's got the battle axe, man. He's got the iron helm, a Talhofer buckler. Yeah, he's really, really good. We're also playing with some new content, dude. I'm excited to use the realms and relics. This is going to be neat. So as mentioned, we're going to have an, an environment that we go into on each level. Each level is going to have like its own unique themed environment that's going to add some uh, some different variability to the gameplay. It's going to be really exciting. And of course, as mentioned as well, we can potentially get our hands on some artifacts. So I'm really going to want to get some blessing tokens. We're going to want to find that altar and uh, try to get our hands on some blessing tokens so we can get our hands on an artifact or two. That would be amazing. And uh, yeah, I haven't looked at them too much in detail. It's been quite a while since I looked at them. But I rem from what I remember, the artifact loot cards are like insanely powerful. They're like super beefed up versions of loot cards. So hopefully we can get something really good out of the artifact deck. And also, there's some new enemies in this Galnox Labyrinth expansion too. There's a couple new enemies that are being shuffled into the enemy deck as I speak. There we go. Hopefully we'll run into some of those. And here we go. We're using the Howling Abyss dungeon deck once again. Hope you guys are digging this, man. Trying to make up for all the games that I've played using the old school original deck. So we're going to go in the Howling Abyss once again. There we go. Okay, cool. And then finally, last but not least, we're going to mix up the blessing tokens. Like so. Give them a little mix around. There we go. And I'm going to put one of them over here on top of the bosses so I remember to use my blessings, if we have any, by the time we make it to Galnock. All right, guys. Here we go. I think we're good. We got Fortitude. We got our Axe Mastery skills. So we can reroll die results of two with Axe Mastery. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go, guys. Okay, here we go. We're heading into the dungeon. Dungeon level one with the Dwarf Nomad of the Worm in Galnock's Labyrinth. Here we go, guys. Let's draw an environment card, first of all. See what the environment is going to be. The Parched. Your throat goes dry from the scorching heat as your feet shuffle through the ashy floor. Ooh. All enemies on this level that are weak to ice add plus two to their damage during combat. You may not search for food when at the campsite and the mushroom grove does not contain rations. Oh my gosh, dude. It's barren down here. It's too dry and too hot for anything to grow. You gain two additional blessing tokens when you pray for a blessing at the altar. That's good. And all enemies on this level that you defeat that are weak to ice gain you an additional gold. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so all enemies that are weak to ice on this level are, are buffed up. They uh, they get some buffs, basically. Okay, cool. So I'm going to set this right here. There we go. All right, we're heading in, guys. Let's see what we've got in the first room. A merchant. Hey, we opened a door to the dungeon, and <laughs> this guy's like... Hey, can I interest you in my wares? Yes, please. So three loot cards and two potions for sale. A lamp. That's very good. Rations. Field guide. Okay. He's got a holy water potion and he's got an energy potion. Now, considering that we're not going to be able to find food down here, it might be a good idea to pick up some rations in this energy potion. I also really want the lamp. Let's see how much we're holding. Three, five, seven, eight, nine, eleven. So we can hold one more. Yee. Um, the lamp would be really, I mean, a lot of this stuff would be really good. I kind of think we might drop the ice hack, or I can trade him the ice hack. As good as it is, the battle axe is just better. We're going to trade him the ice hack. Yeah, so we're going to, it's worth five. Ooh, yeah, it's worth five. So we can trade it to him for the lamp, since the lamp is worth three. So we'll get the lamp. There we go. So now we've got uh, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can hold two more items worth of weight. I think we're going to go ahead and buy the energy potion for one. Like so. Oh, wait, we can hold up to 12, right? So three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 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 up to 12. Okay, so we'll go ahead and buy that. And then I also want to buy the rations too. You may discard this card to regain two energy. It's basically the same thing as an energy potion. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll spend one. And we'll get the rations as well. There we go. Okay, cool. Cool stuff. And we are maxed out now. Let's put this over here. Put that right there. And thank you, Mr. Merchant. That was amazing. I really like the Merchant in the Howling Abyss. He's always super, uh, super useful. We've got a skirmish up ahead. We're going to skip it. And instead, we're going to go into a clearing where anything can happen. And we're going to draw and resolve a plot card. Okay, our first plot card of the adventure. Ooh, you were drawn to the sounds of a whimpering animal. 
You are amazed to find a small pig-like creature with a human likeness caught in a snare trap. We're going to release the pig man. We have no reason to carve him up. We have full energy right now. The frightened creature looks confused when you release it. It pauses for a moment and then takes off on two feet. Move up one on the morality track. Okay, cool. There we go. And we get one eye toward finding the boss. There we go. So we get one icon. And we're going to move on from the clearing and go further into level one of Galnox Labyrinth. There's a savage encounter up ahead with a big bad dude. We're going to skip that and go into an ambush. Yikes. That is not good, dudes. That is not good at all. All right. Your foe catches you by surprise, gaining the upper hand. Draw an enemy card, add the dungeon level one to their initial damage. And we're going to add the dungeon level plus five to their health. So plus six to the health of an undead archer. Yikes. So he's got 10 health. Oh man. So he's going to do three initial damage and you may not defend against initial damage. So our our armor does nothing in regards to defending against this initial damage. So he's doing plus three to his roll right here. And he does two plus three is five damage. Yikes, man. Big hit. Big hit from the undead archer. We get pegged with an arrow as soon as we walk into the room. He was ready for us. Okay, we need to retaliate here. Um, we're going to go ahead and spend... I think I want to spend... Hmm... Three... Yeah, we're going to spend three. We're going to spend three energy. We're doing a plus one damage from the Talhofer Buckler. Because um, it's plus one damage to the sum of attack rolls. So, I'm going to go ahead and roll. There we go. We get to re-roll die results of two with Axe Mastery. So, we'll go ahead and re-roll that. So, we did five plus six plus the one is 12 damage. And we took down the Undead Archer. Very nice. I'm glad I spent three energy on that. I was thinking about spending two. We wouldn't have got them. Uh, we're going to get a loot, and we're going to get a gold. So let's see what the loot is. It's a cookbook. Um, hmm. I don't want to drop anything for the cookbook. I mean, I guess we could use an energy potion or the rations. Let's go ahead and eat the rations. You may discard this card to regain two energy. We'll do that. We're going to gain two energy back. And then we can pick up the cookbook and we'll be maxed out on weight right there. So the cookbook, of course, says gain one extra energy when you eat a ration at a campsite. Okay. Um, yeah, that was it. And then did we get the gold? Ooh, I don't remember if I got the gold. Two, three, four. I I, guys, my, my short-term memory, I swear. I don't remember if I got the gold. I don't think I did. No, I just ate the ration and then grabbed the cookbook. So we also get a gold for killing the undead archer. That's bad, man. That's when you know it's getting bad. Okay, then we're going to get rid of the ambush here and keep going. And I think we're doing everything right here, right? Yeah, because it's just enemies that are weak to ice. And yeah, okay, cool. I think we're doing everything right. Okay, we're going to go deeper into level one. Got a savage encounter. No, man, I, I don't like these. We're going to skip that for sure. Head into the mushroom grove. Oh, you may not search for food when at the campsite. And the mushroom grove does not contain rations. So it's not going to have any rations at all. So do we still have to roll? How does that work? I'm assuming we we don't. Like, can I still get poisoned? There wouldn't even be any mushrooms there to poison me because there aren't any mushrooms. So I'm assuming you just skipped this. Yeah, that makes the most sense. All right, go deeper down. What do we got? The false idol. We can beg for power, beg for wealth, beg for our life, or we can ignore the false idol. If we beg for power, we're going to get two energy and a loot card. We don't really need that. We're maxed out right now. We could gain two gold and one potion card, or we can gain two health and one ration. That sounds like the way to go. Let's beg for our life. So we're going to move down on the morality track by one. We're going to gain two health and one ration. Yes, dude. Okay, cool. So we still can get rations at least from the false idol. That's good. That is very good. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and move further into level one. We found some treasure. We're going to go ahead and resolve this. You find an open treasure chest that has been recently looted. A single coin remains, so we gain a gold. And it also activates our race ability, gain one health whenever you resolve the treasure card. So we're going to go ahead and gain another health back. Cool, man. We're getting our health back. This is good. This is very good. We're getting close to the end of level one. Only a few rooms left. A skirmish up ahead. Let's go ahead and use the lamp and see what's the other way. An ambush. Cool. We're going to go that way. That was a very good use of the lamp. We're going to head toward the ambush and we're going to resolve it so we get to jump on them. And uh, we're going to draw an enemy card, ignore their initial damage, and uh, we're going to add three to our attack. And we're going to add the dungeon level one to the health of a wraith. Okay, so it's got eight health. Lots of undead enemies down here so far in level one. Galnox Labyrinth. 
The Wraith says initial damage and counter strikes both steal one blessing. Fortunately for us, we don't have any blessings right now. So we're going to be doing plus three damage. I think I'm going to spend two energy. Like so. We're going to roll two dice and we're adding three plus one to it from the Talhofer Buckler. So we're adding... Ooh, maybe I just want to spend one. Now we're going to spend one energy. Yeah, we're going to spend one... And we're doing, we're doing plus four to our roll. And we get to re-roll die results of two with Axe Mastery. Nice. So we got six plus four is ten, and we took down the Wraith. Let's go. Cool. All right. There we go. Uh, it's got a treasure class of two, so we're going to get a loot and a potion. The loot is the Grave Stomper. I'm not worried about it. We can't hold it because we have... Uh, Oh, wait, aren't we maxed out on weight? 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, I have to keep checking that. Yes, we're maxed out on weight. I don't need the Grave Stomper. And then we get a potion. And it's a Spark Bomb, but we are maxed out on weight. I guess we could drink our Energy Potion and uh, gain 2 Energy. We'll go ahead and do that. And yes, that was a Potion Energy Potion. So we're going to gain 2 Energy, go back to full Energy, and then we'll scoop up the Spark Bomb to max out our weight. And we get the Wraith in our Graveyard. So we've got 2 enemies in the Grave so far. And we're moving deeper down. We've got an arrow trap up ahead. I think I want to skip it. Yeah, I want to skip the arrow trap. Into the altar. Let's go, guys. Sometimes a sanctuary is found in the least expected place. You stumble to the altar and pray for a blessing, strength, healing, or favor. I think I want to go ahead and pray for that blessing, guys. Let's grab ourselves a blessing token and set ourselves up to get an artifact the next time we get loot. Dude, this is exciting. Okay, we're going deeper in. An ambush would be good. Ooh, an archangel. No, we're not going to do that because we're going to lose four health because we're at negative five on the morality track. Push our luck into the mystical fountain. Before you stands a grand fountain. You are drawn to it by a potent allure. Your eyes wide open. You cup your hand and ladle the warm liquid to your lips. Let's go ahead and roll the die. See what we get. We got a six, dude. Gain blessing tokens equal to your current dungeon level. Well, we're on dungeon level one, but we do gain a blessing token. That's amazing. Let's go. That's the end of level one right there, guys. That was really, really good. That was super, super good. Okay, cool, man. Picked up a couple blessing tokens right at the end of the level there. Cool stuff. We got a couple of enemies in the grave. We picked up a lamp. That's amazing. Dudes, let's go, man. Let's go. Oh, you know what I just realized too, guys? When we killed that undead archer, he had more than six health. So Olive would have went down to one. Let's just go ahead and say that we gave her a gold, right? Because we had plenty of gold to put her back up to two. Then when we killed that Wraith, she would have went down to one again. We're going to give... Do we even want to give her gold? I mean, all she does is remove poison when we're at the... When we're at the camp. Yeah, I guess so. We'll give her a gold. We'll keep her around. Sorry about that. I know I kind of played that out of turn a little bit there. I'll, I'll try to do my best to remember her. There's so many moving parts now. It's crazy. <laughs> I got to try my best to remember all this stuff. I'm like having a jillion things running through my mind all at once while I'm narrating the game. So hopefully I can remember this stuff moving forward. Here we go. I know you guys don't mind too much. You get it. You get it. Let's go ahead and shuffle up the dungeon deck here. There we go. Okay. Set that there. Put these dudes back in the graveyard. Okay, we're going to eat our one ration. We're at full energy. We've got no poison. And we're moving into level two of the dungeon. And uh, yeah, we're not at the parched anymore, so we can... Put that off to the side. I'll discard that over this way. Okay, we're going to grab a plot. It is the shrine. In the clearing, you find a towering shrine covered in vegetation. You are overwhelmed by a sense of power, just as a gentle breeze rushes past you. Gain blessing tokens equal to your position on the morality track. We're at negative five. We don't gain any, but we do get three icons. So we go up to four. That's good. I like the three icons, except for the fact that we don't get any blessing tokens. Cool, and now we're heading into level two, so let's go ahead and draw an environment card, and it is the Plateaus. A steady, stiff breeze cuts across... The what is up with the breezes? <laughs> How are there so many breezes down here? A steady, stiff breeze cuts across you as you gaze out at a vast maze of ledges. If you resolve the Labyrinth card on this level, you must discard an additional ration to escape. Lose three health for each ration you cannot discard. If you resolve the altar card on this level, you gain health equal to your position on the morality tracker in addition to any other reward. Well, that's not going to help us. If you face the boss on this level, you gain plus two damage to the sum of your attacks. That's pretty cool. Okay, so the labyrinth is really gnarly on this level. We, we've got to get rid of an extra ration on this level. Yikes. Okay, 
And uh, yeah, when we resolve the altar, we're going to gain health equal to our position morality, but we're at negative five. So, all right. So we mainly just have to avoid the labyrinth on the plateaus. Interesting. Okay. And highly, highly doubt we're going to face the boss. All right. Let's see what we got. We've got an ambush. I kind of want to just do it, man. We might be able to get our hand on an artifact. Um, okay, let's do it. We're going to catch our foe by surprise and gain the upper hand. Draw an enemy card, ignore their initial attack, add three damage to our attack, and we're going to add the dungeon level two to the health of... Oh, it's a pit trap. If resolving an ambush card that was drawn as the first card, you avoid the pit trap. Okay, cool. We leap over the pit trap. We did that in the last adventure also. The uh, dwarf nomad is good at that. It's good at spotting those pit traps. Oh my gosh. By the way, we get our lamp back. Might want to go ahead and use that right now. Uh, the labyrinth? No, there's there's no way. We have to skip it, even regardless of what this is. We have to skip it. It's an ambush. It is what it is. Bo catches us by surprise. They're going to add two to their initial damage, and uh, they're going to add two plus five to their health. So seven to the health of a zombie. Yes, that's good. They don't attack. They don't attack first, rather. Cool. So uh, ignore initial damage. So we are going to get to attack here. Another undead enemy. This is crazy, dude. So many undead enemies down here. All right. So let's see. What do we want to do? Um, I don't think I want to throw the spark bomb. We're going to try to save that for an enemy weak to fire. I guess we'll just go ahead and attack this dude. Do I want to spend... How much do I want to spend, though? I think I'm going to spend two. Yeah, I'm going to spend two. Let's see what we get. Okay, cool. We got nine damage, and that is exactly enough to take him down. That was amazing. Let's go. Heck yes. He drops one loot. So check it out, guys. We're going to spend a blessing token... Because it says, when instructed to draw a loot card during the game, you may pay blessing tokens to draw from the artifact deck instead. Your first artifact will cost one blessing token, while your second will cost two, your third will cost three, and so on. Artifact cards are always drawn at random. So, I'm going to go ahead and give them another little shuffle here. And we're going to draw one at random and see what we get. All right, guys, what do we get? This is exciting. Please be something crazy. Please be something crazy. The Revenge. Ooh, it's some kind of blade. Whenever you roll a six during an attack, gain one health. I mean, that's cool, but it's not that good. It's not as good as the Battle Axe. Dude, the Battle Axe is stupid good. <laughs> it's so good. The Battle Axe is better than an artifact weapon. That's crazy. This thing is worth eight gold. You know what this is for? This is basically to trade to the... <laughs> the merchant for anything we want. Whenever you roll a six during an attack, gain one health. I mean, that is cool. It's like it leeches life from them, but the battle ax, when you roll uh, die results of one, deal six damage, that is just objectively way better. This does weigh two, so we'd have to drop something. So we're gonna drop the cookbook, and we're also gonna drop the explorer's map, I think. Yeah, we're going to drop those, and hopefully maybe we'll we'll run into a merchant that has scale armor, and we can trade him the revenge for the scale armor. That's my hope. That is my hope, because I'm kind of sketched out getting rid of the Explorer's map. That's a little sketchy, because that is a very useful item, but let's hope that that happens. We're going to put this right here on top. I like being able to see that. That's cool. That's cool. At least we got, at least we got our hands on an artifact, right? Okay, and then we also get the zombie in our graveyard, and that is three enemies in the grave. So we're going to go ahead and flip those. And since we are of the worm as our star, star sign, we've got the brawn attribute. So we get a brawn skill. So let's see what we've got. Dude, shield block. Yes. Subtract an additional one point from initial damage when you have a shield or buckler equipped and your buckler cannot be broken. We're getting that. That's insane. That is just so insane. So we're mitigating an extra one point of damage uh, when we have our buckler equipped, our Talhofer buckler over here. So there we go. Let's move this out this way like so. Cool. All right, guys. We've got some great skills right now. We've got Fortitude, Axe Mastery, and Shield Block. Insane. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to move further in and see what we've got up ahead. We've got Treasure. We're going to gain a gold and we're going to heal a health with our race ability. Like so. And I really want to find the merchant. Where is the merchant? Where are you, buddy? We got the Mystical Fountain. We found another Mystical Fountain. Let's go ahead and sip from it. See what happens. Oh, no. Draw an enemy card, adding the dungeon level to its health. So we go to sip the water, and an enemy comes popping out, comes flying out of the water. We're going to add the dungeon level to its health. So two to the health of a cave troll. Can you imagine if it was a pit trap? How would that even make any sense? A cave troll. So it's going to have 10 health. And it says you may avoid this conflict by spending three gold. 
I kind of want to because he does a lot of damage. Although we are going to mitigate three damage now with shield block. Mm. But then we have to spend energy. I think I'd rather expend the gold, honestly, than spend energy fighting him. So we're going to give him the three gold. Yeah, we're going to give him three gold and skip this fight. I think that makes more sense right now. There we go. Okay, skip right past that. He comes blasting out of the water, out of the fountain, and we just toss him some gold and <laughs> scurry away. A clearing. Anything can happen in a clearing. Draw and resolve a plot card. Let's see what we've got, guys. Loud squealing. Echoes off the cavern walls in the clearing. What is up with all these pigmen down here? You see a small pig-like man being cornered by a large gray serpent. We can defend him or keep moving on. I don't want to lose health and gain poison. We're going to keep moving on. You decide to leave the swan to defend itself. As you creep away into the next passage, you hear a loud scream followed by silence. Move down one on the morality track and gain two icons. All right, we're as low as we can go. So we're going to gain two icons right there. Also, when we defeated that zombie, he had more than six health. So old Olive is going to lose a morale. And you know what, guys? I don't think I care about having her stick around. She's honestly not that good. She's really, at least so far for me and my experience, I'm sure if I had a crap load of poison on me and I found a campsite, I'd be like, oh my god, Olive is the best, the best henchman. But yeah, so far she's just, she hasn't been impactful at all whatsoever. So I'm not even going to try to make her stick around. I'd rather hang on to my gold for like potions or something at the merchant. So for right now, uh, look, <laughs> speak of the devil, here's the campsite. So... It does say, when at the campsite, she will tend your wounds, removing all poison, but we don't have any. Uh, so we could cook, search, or rest. Do we want to gain energy? Not necessarily. I think I want to search. We need to, we need to find food, especially since we couldn't do that on level one because of the, uh, the parched landscape. But here on the plateaus, we can find food. So we're going to go ahead and search and gain a ration, which we very much need before the end of this level. And we're going to move further down, away from our little campsite, into a savage encounter... That we're going to... I'm going to use the lamp here. It's a skirmish. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the skirmish. Let me see. What is the... Draw two enemy cards. Discard the enemy at the less... No, no, no. That's just a worse skirmish, basically. You draw your weapon and are ready for battle. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their health. Okay, so two to the health of... Ooh, a Death Seer. Here's a new enemy in Galnox Labyrinth. Cool, dudes. Okay, so he's got nine. Like so. The Death Seer is immune to potions. Interesting. And he is also undead. It's like all undead guys down here. This is crazy. This is cool. Very, very thematic. It would be like that in Galnox Labyrinth. Just a bunch of undead guys just roaming around. Okay, cool. So he's going to attack first. He does two damage, but we're mitigating two with our Talhofer Buckler and one with the Iron Helm, so three. So he gets negative one to his roll. He did two minus one is one. Chump change, dude. Nothing. Ain't nothing. We still got 15 health left. We are going to go ahead and roll two dice. Yeah, we're going to roll two. We're getting plus one damage from our Talhofer Buckler, so plus one to our roll. And we did eight plus the one is nine. Dude, right on the money. Let's go, man. We're getting lucky. Getting some good lucky rolls here. Um, and he is going to drop a loot and a potion. Oh, man, if we had another blessing, we could try to go for an artifact. So he's going to drop a loot. The Mask of Mizlac, dude, our boy Mizlac. You may avoid conflicts with any undead enemy with a base health of four or less. That would have been pretty useful, considering all we're fighting is undead guys, but we don't really need this. Um, yeah, so let's see, three, five, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, no, we're maxed out. We're going to go ahead and drop the Mask of Mizlac. That is cool, man. I've never equipped that ever. Every time I pick it up, I already have, like, the Iron Helm. Um, oh, well. And then we're going to get a potion... It is a holy water potion. We can't pick up anything. I almost want to get it just because we've seen so many undead enemies. But at the same time, the fact that we have seen so many undead enemies means there's less of them in the enemy deck. Although the extra enemies from the Galnox Labyrinth expansion, they are all undead. So you know what? I'm actually going to drop the spark bomb and we're going to pick up the holy water. And how much do you want to bet the next enemy that we see is weak to fire? How much do you want to bet? And then we're going to get a gold. Awesome. Dude, this guy drops all kinds of stuff. A loot, a potion, and a gold. And then we'll get him in the graveyard. Cool, dude. That was cool. That was cool. I love uh, having new experiences in the game, fighting new enemies. We got a skirmish. We're going to skip it. We're going to go into the Archangel. Yikes. She's going to judge us for our deeds, man. We're at negative five on the morality track, so we're going to lose four health. Oh, my God. One, two, three, four. We have been naughty, dude. We're getting coal in our stocking. There we go. Lose four health. And the last room of level two. 
The false idol. You love to see it. Your eyes lock on to a huge evil statue carved into the wall. It is begging to be worshipped. What shall you do? We could beg for power, beg for wealth, beg for your life, or ignore the false idol. Um, hmm. Gain two energy and one loot. Eh, we don't really need loot. Gain two gold and one potion. Gain two health and a ration. I think that's the one, man. We're going to do that. So you move down one on the morality track. We can't go any lower. And we're going to gain two health and one ration. Let's go ahead and gain a couple health back. And we'll gain a ration. Awesome. Cool stuff. Okay. And I think that that was it. I don't think we missed anything there, right? Nope, I think that was it. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up the dungeon deck. Cool. All we really needed to watch out for in the plateaus was the labyrinth, pretty much. And we skipped past that earlier. And we're not fighting the boss, so we don't have to worry about that. Cool. Shuffle this thing up. And we're heading into level 3 of Galnox Labyrinth. This is cool, man. I'm digging this. I'm really liking playing with the environment cards and the artifacts. This is fun. Alright, we'll get this shuffled up. There we go. We're going to eat one of these rations. And we're going to gain an energy from it, like so. Cool. Alright, and then we don't have any poison. We're going to move into level 3 of the dungeon. We go down the water slide. We draw a plot card. Ooh, it's a new one. You hear a faint... You hear a faint rustling behind you and turn just as something hard strikes you in the face. Hold, hold on now. Hold on. <laughs> I, don't like where, I don't like where this is going. I'll lose one health. If you're still alive, continue. What is going on down here? You stagger backwards and blink the pain away as a disheveled young man brandishing a large rock, a large rock, rushes toward you for another go. You disarm him easily and throw him to the ground. As he babbles nonsense, you raise the rock above your head and take in the sight of him. He appears to have been lost down here for weeks. We can either finish the job or show mercy. Um, you know what? We're going to show mercy. You toss the rock aside and point, uh, point to the way out before leaving him there. Gain one blessing token and move up one on the morality track. That's amazing. Let's go, guys. We gain a blessing token and move up one on the morality track. We get one icon. Dude. If we get a loot, we've got two blessing tokens to trade in for an artifact. Let's go, guys. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, before we do, we're leaving the plateaus. And on level three, what do we got? The Sanctum. Ooh, what is this? A sense of calm rushes into your spirit as your eyes behold a majestic oak in a clearing. Immediately gain a blessing token. Dude, okay. Yes, please. If you resolve the treasure card on this level, you gain a potion in addition to any other reward. Wow. If you resolve the altar on this level, you gain three health in addition to any other reward. All enemies on this level that you defeat gain you an additional blessing token on top of any other reward. Oh my god, that's incredible. Dude. Holy crap, dude, the sanctum is amazing. That's insane. Okay, dude, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's head into the sanctum, guys. Here we go, an ambush? Yeah, let's do it. We catch our foe by surprise. We're going to add the dungeon level three to the health of... A flying snake. It's got six health. And we get to add three to our attack. And check it out. If we roll ones, we deal six damage. If we roll twos, we get to re-roll. So we can't miss. So we're doing three. I'm going to spend one. Go ahead and roll. We do five plus the three is eight damage. We take him down. Let's freaking go. Oh, he drops nothing though, which sucks. Oh, well, at least we get him in the grave. Do we have anybody else? Just the deaths here. Okay, at least we get him in the grave. It is what it is. And... All enemies on this level that you defeat gain you an additional blessing token. Dude, so we gain a blessing. To oh my god. This is insane. This is insane, guys. We could just pile up on blessing tokens. We need to do every fight we can. The campsite. Um, I think I want to get back. Ooh. I think I want to get back some energy, but we only have one food. We're going to do it, though. We're going to cook. Spend one ration to gain three energy. Okay, we'll spend this ration. We're going to gain three energy, like so. Put those over here. Go deeper in. What do we got? The merchant. That's who I want to see. We also get our lamp back. Also, uh, Olive, she took off, man. Because we fought an enemy that had six health, right? It's when it's six. Yep, six or more. She's gone. We're, we're not worried about Olive. See ya, Olive. Till next time. There we go. I'm really not worried about her. She's just, meh. She's kind of meh. <laughs> All right. Um, we got the merchant. Let's see what he's got for sale. He's got an undeath potion. Dude, an alchemy satchel would be amazing. Mislak's journal. That's cool. Rations and then a couple of potions. A health potion. Ooh. 
and an ice shard. Okay, first of all, we're buying the health potion. I'm gonna, ooh, there went a gold off the table. Let me grab that. Okay, there we go. Went on a rescue mission. I got the gold. We're gonna spend that one gold that went flying off the table to buy this health potion. And we're gonna drink it immediately. And since we have fortitude, we gain an extra health from health potion. So we're gonna gain five. So one, two, three, four, five. We're at full health. That was a full heal right there. Let's go. Okay, and then I really want Mizlac's journal, but we can't hold anymore. Cost two. You know, we're gonna trade him the revenge. We're gonna we're gonna trade him the revenge. I'm gonna put that over here. I'll just uh I'll put that on the bottom of the artifact deck because we're gonna be drawn from the top of the artifact deck from now on. So we'll trade him that for Mizlac's journal. It says discard to reveal the top five cards in the loot deck. Discard any loot cards you wish, and then place the remaining cards face down back on top of the loot deck. Dude. That sounds crazy. Okay, we're gonna do that now. Let's go ahead and discard this. We get to look at the top five cards of the loot deck, discard any we wish, and then place the remaining cards face down back on top of the loot deck. Okay. Dude, scale armor. That's what I was wanting. Are you kidding me? We were that close to him having it. We could have traded the weapon for it. The mimic? Okay, get the hell out of my face. Keepsake, get out of here. These three are great. These are really good. I want the scale armor next. It weighs three. So we probably have to get rid of this. And then, then we're going to be maxed out. We're going to be at six, eight, ten. Oh, no, wait. We'd still be able to hold two more things. Right? It'd be three, six, eight, ten. Yeah. Okay, I want the scale armor next. And then the magic ring and then the health potion. Okay. Man, that makes me want to just get the loot instead of the artifact next time we get a loot card. Oh. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. Also, I'm going to spend one gold... And I'm going to purchase the rations here. And we're going to eat them. We're going to discard this to regain two energy. Ooh, actually we're not because we're only missing one. So we're just going to hang on to it. So we're at one, two, three, four, seven, nine, eleven. We can hold one more thing. Do we want the ice shard potion too? Sure, why not? We're going to buy the ice shard potion also. Yeah, why not? There we go. Cool. And then you can keep the undeath potion. And we're going to move on from the merchant. Awesome, dude. Heck yes. I love seeing the merchant. That's amazing. What we got? An ambush. We're going to do it. We're going to add three to the health. Oop. Right there. We're going to add three to the health of... Oh, it's a pit trap. So we leap right over the pit trap when resolving an ambush as the first card. Very nice. What do we have next? We've got an arrow trap. I think I want to use the lamp. False idol. We're going to go that way. Let's go to the false idol. And... Hmm. We don't need to gain health anymore. We do need a ration, though. So I'm going to beg for my life again. We're going to gain two health and one ration. Dude, the, the false idol has been amazing for gaining rations. That's insane. And we move down one on the morality track also when we do that. Go further in. We got a skirmish. Oh, we haven't seen... We, I don't think we've seen any of those savage encounters. I think I'm just going to do this. We're going to do it. We draw our weapon and prepare for battle. And uh, we draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their health. So three to the health of... Ooh, a floating skull. It's a new enemy. Okay, so he's got eight health. All right, there we go. It says, defeating the floating skull will move you up one on the morality track. Hey, that's cool. I like that. Okay, awesome. All right, so he's going to attack first. He does two damage, but we're mitigating three with our gear. So negative one to his attack. And he misses because he rolls doubles. We are going to retaliate here. I'm going to spend two. We're doing plus one damage with our Talhofer Buckler see what we get. Dude, 11 plus 1, 12 damage completely crushed him. So we get to move up one on the morality track and we gain a blessing token uh, since we're in the sanctum. Dude, the sanctum is insane, guys. Holy crap. We get the floating skull in our graveyard. That's three enemies. Let's go ahead and flip those and let's get ourselves a skill. I don't want to get ahead of myself, guys, but this might be another all the way run here, dudes. We're getting stacked, guys. Dual wield, berserk, or parry. Um, I don't know. You know what else we could do too? We could not spend the three and try to go for a skill outside of our proficiency. We could do that. I think I might actually. No, dude, I'm going to get berserk because check this out. You may spend two health to add an additional die to your attack roll and add five damage if you throw your axe. I'm not so much worried about the second part. We have so much health. We have 17 health as a dwarf nomad. We can afford to spend two, two health to add an additional uh, die to our attack roll. We might be able to just kill the boss outright. Like if we get the Galnock, we might be able to roll four dice and just kill him outright. So we're going to go ahead and get Berserk. 
I'm going to put that up this way, like so. Put our buckler back on top. Dude, this is nuts, guys. This is craziness right here. We got crazy good gear. Okay, and skills. All right, we're moving on from that. Well, we got up ahead in level three. We're getting close-ish to the end here. Oh, man, we got a clearing. I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't see this. Do I want to push past it? I don't know if I want to go to the boss right now. I kind of want to try to go through another level and get that... Um, I want to fight something and get this scale armor. I think I'm actually going to skip the clearing, believe it or not. Yeah, we're going to skip it into the mystical fountain. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drink from the fountain. See what we get. We rolled a two. That's not good. You immediately regret your actions. Gain one poison. Okay, I think it's the first time we got poison this entire adventure so far. Or this, you know, adventure number two on this run. Going deeper in. We've got a skirmish. I think we're going to do it, man. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. What was that last enemy that we fought? It was a... Oh, it was a floating skull. And he had... Yeah, he had a loot, dude. I didn't get the loot from him. Yeah, I didn't get the loot from the floating skull. So we would have gotten scale armor. And we're definitely going to pick that up. Yeah, we didn't get the loot, right? No, we didn't. I, I gave myself one morality and a blessing token and didn't grab the loot. Okay, you guys are probably freaking out. Cool, so we got the scale armor. That's amazing. Subtract two from initial damage and counter strikes. Cannot use the conceal or shadow skill, but we don't have either of those skills. So we've got three, six, eight, ten, eleven, ooh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We got to get rid of some. So we're going to eat the ration to gain two energy. And then we're going to drop the Holy Water and the Ice Shard. Cool. So let me just double check. We got 1, 2, 5, 8, 10, 12. Okay, we're maxed out now. We're maxed out. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. We're going to go ahead and do I want to do the skirmish. Now I don't really need to because we've got the scale armor. And maybe I should have just resolved the clearing. <laughs> I wish I would have known about that. But we could get an artifact, potentially. That might be something crazy. Let's do it. We're going to do the skirmish. We're going to add three to the health of a skinkling. It's got four health. I almost feel bad for him. When the skinkling success successfully hits, he gained one poison token. But we're attacking first. We're getting plus three. Oh, no, we're not. We're not ambushing. Um, okay, I guess we'll just spend one. We're getting plus one from the Talhofer Buckler. And we rolled five, so six damage to take him down. Poor little skinkling guy. Uh, we're going to get a gold from him. We're also going to get a blessing token. Dude, this is insane, guys. And then we're going to get a loot, but instead I'm going to trade in two of our blessing tokens right here. And we're going to get an artifact instead. Let's see what we get here. Bam! Dude, what is this? The Star of Brahma. Whenever an enemy rolls doubles, you deal five damage to them. Oh my god. Dude, that is cool, man. Oh, we've got the Iron Helm, but this is really cool. Dude, do we want to get rid of the Iron Helm for this? Oh, it's really sketchy, man. I think I want to just to experience it, because it's so freaking cool. I think we're going to. I think we're going to drop the Iron Helm. I want the one... Uh, damage to be modified from initial damage and counter strikes. I feel like that's really good, but we've got so much health. Plus we just picked up the scale armor and we have the Talhofer buckler. I think we can afford to drop it. Dude, we're going to equip the star of Brahma. I've never had this. It looks sick too. That is so cool. Whenever an enemy rolls doubles. So not only do they miss, you deal five damage to them. This thing is worth 12 gold. Boom. Look at that, dude. That is cool. That is really cool. And then we get the skinkling in our grave. Awesome. All right, last room of level three. What do we got? The Archangel? <laughs> I don't want to go to the Archangel, but it might be... Oh, dude, it might be something nasty. We're going to skip it. Please don't be a Savage Encounter. It's treasure! Yes, yeah, so what a good way to end it, dude. So we would gain a health with our Dwarf ability, but um, we're already at full health. And it says, if you resolve a treasure card on this level, you gain a potion in addition to any other reward with the Sanctum. So we're going to draw a potion... It's an ice shard, but we can't hold anything else. So we're just going to drop it. And since we can't hold anything else, we're going to go ahead and gain D6 gold and a ration. So we're going to gain a ration and we're going to gain D6 gold. And we got five. There we go. Cool. That's a lot of gold. One, two, three, four, five. Last couple times I uh, resolved the second part of the treasure card. I think I got like two gold and then one gold or something like that. So that's cool. I made up for it. Sweet, guys. That was crazy. Okay, that was the end of level three right there. Let's go ahead and shuffle up. 
in case we don't draw a 3i plot card. And we're going to be heading into level 4 here momentarily. Dude, this is so fun. Wow. This is cool, man. I might have to uh, start adding the Realms and Relics pack to more games. Because this is adding a lot to the game. This is really, really neat. Cool. So let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck. About to head into dungeon level 4. But before we do, we're going to eat a ration. We're going to gain an energy. We have 9 energy right now. We only have the one poison. We're going to go into level 4 of the dungeon. We get our lamp back. Like so. And let's draw a plot card and see what it is. Oh, I think we're going to the boss. You find yourself in the threshold of a small prison room. An orc guard is fast asleep at a table where a couple of gold coins rest. The sole prisoner spots you and silently points to the keys on the table. We can free the prisoner or we can take the money and run. You know what, guys? We're going to take the money and run. Move down one on the morality track and gain two gold. You dash through the room, picking up the coins as you pass the table. The orc wakes up confused, but you are long gone. So we're going to move down one and gain two gold. There we go. If we would have done the other, we would have lost an energy and three health. And I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound fun. Oh, and we get the three icons. So we go from seven up to ten and we are facing Galnock. We have found his lair and we're facing him. So we don't even need to draw any more environment cards. Those are done. We're done with the dungeon deck. Here we go, guys. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything else here. I think we're good. Hopefully I haven't forgotten or messed up anything <laughs> during the playthrough. But I think we're good on everything. Fortitude, Axe Mastery, Shield Block, Reserve. Okay, yep. And we've got a buttload of uh, tokens over here, of blessing tokens. So we're going to go ahead and check those out and see what we got here. Let's see what we have. Gain two health. We're already at full health. Gain two health. Okay. Gain an energy. There we go. We're up to full energy. And can we get a green heart to remove that poison? Gain an energy. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. We're sitting pretty right now. Cool, dudes. And boom. There he is. Galnock himself, guys. He's got 20 health. Let's put a couple tens on him. Like so. Does two damage. He is weak to undead stuff. And it says if Galnock rolls doubles, he strikes for the value indicated on one of the dice. Okay. That's all good. He's also going to take five damage, though, from our Star of Brahma, so that's good. Okay, so he is going to attack. So he's doing two damage, but we're mitigating two, and then two again from the Talhofer Buckler, so four. So he's doing negative two. Dude, we're like a tank. He does one minus two is negative one. He does nothing. He, he, like, he like, breaks his own weapon, basically. He damages his own axe that he's wielding. All right, we're going to retaliate, and dudes... I think we're going to go ahead and use Berserk. So we're going to spend three energy and we're going to spend two health like that. And we're going to roll four dice. So we're going to roll these three. Okay, so we did 10, 15 damage. Plus we get to roll another one. And a one does six damage with the battle axe. We just did 21 damage and one-shotted Galnock. Get completely freaking annihilated, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. What? What, dude? The battle axe is insane, man. Berserk is insane. The dwarf, no matter the worm, is insane. Holy crap, dude. We just one-shotted Galnock. Do we walk? We strut in there. He goes, prank, hits our armor, scuffs up his axe. He's like, huh? And then we just crush him in one shot with the battle axe, dude. That's a battle axe. His battle axe ain't nothing, dude. They ain't got nothing on our battle axe. Let's freaking go, dudes. Okay, cool, man. He's got a treasure class of two. So we're going to get a loot. It is the magic ring. That's right. Okay, so we're going to drop something, right? We're maxed out. Three, six, plus 10, 11, 12. Yep, okay. We'll just go ahead and use the antidote, even though we're going to heal poison in between adventures. And then we're going to pick up the magic ring. And dude, we're unstoppable. We've got the magic ring and the lamp. We've got the best weapon in the game. We've got the best armor in the game. The best shield in the game. And an, an amazing, ridiculous artifact helmet. Dude, uh, this is it. This is the kit right here. I don't know how you can get any better than this. We can't pick up anything. <laughs> like, we basically can't pick up anything. The only thing we might do next game is drop either the ring or the lamp just so we can pick up health potions and stuff like that if we need to. But, dude, we are freaking hooked up. We also get three uh, gold from defeating Galnock. One, two, three. And would you look at that? We have almost all the gold. There's only one single coin remaining in the gold pool over there. And, uh, oh, we also get a potion as well from Galnock. It's an energy potion. We're going to drop it. And there we go, guys. We get Galnock in our graveyard along with this little skinkling. And we're going to trade their corpses in 
at the Lonely Troll before we head into the third adventure next time with the Dwarf Nomad of the Worm. Guys, hit the thumbs up like button, hit the red subscribe button, and click the bell to never miss an upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm having an absolute blast with this playthrough. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of the Dwarf Nomad of the Worm so far, guys. He's absolutely killing it. And until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.